Tonight, we have Melanie Adcock, the founder of TechMonth Chicago, with us right here. So please give her a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Uh, thank you, Claire, for your wonderful announcements. And, and thank you for everyone who has come out here this fine, frigid, cold January evening to hear something interesting. And I hope I'm able to provide that for you tonight. Uh, my name is Melanie Adcock, and I am the founder and CEO of Tech Month Chicago. It's a, a special initiative that I uh, helped create and spearhead to create a month of technology awareness for the city of Chicago. So I thought we could start at the beginning here and discuss why do we need a technology awareness month? Um, there's lots of ways to answer that, but I'll start with a quick story. Um, when I first started this, I'm like, oh, I have this idea. I'm going to go get some support. And I emailed someone saying, hey, could you mention this in your newsletter? And then I got uh, some angry phone calls afterwards. Why do we need this? Why do we need this? So, and I was like, oh, my. Um, so I think th there was a lot of resistance in the beginning. Um, but there are a couple of things to consider here when we think about why we need a technology awareness month. Okay, so let's take it from what we do have. We've had here in the city a couple of week-long expos here and there, and about those, they've been in one location, usually downtown. Uh, companies pay to exhibit, people pay to get in. It's mostly geared toward tech industry insiders and not the general public, and the expo needs to make money to keep themselves going. We love these. We love you. We love you very dearly. But, okay? And so the question I was asking is, what about everyone else? So here are some questions about that that came up. Uh, how does it serve all of Chicago's locations if it's in only one location? What about organizations that can't afford the exhibit fee or aren't necessarily for-profit organizations? What about attendees from other different parts of uh, Chicago's socioeconomic stratosphere, as well as uh, just people who can't afford to go or pay to get in? And how does this serve the whole community? And then there have been some other concepts as well, um, as far as weeks uh, are concerned. And, and these are great, wonderful things. Uh, they consist of curated content that a group of people come up with to provide, and it's usually just uh, dur throughout the year, um, not throughout the year, but just for the week only. They're sometimes not run by organizations that are based in Chicago, so they don't really know the city that well. And there's been some inconsistencies with our weeks. And again, we love you. Um, in 2018, we did not have some of our favorites. We did not have Social Media Week in Chicago. They were not here like they have been for so long. Tech Week Chicago was not here as well last year in 2018. Um, and, and they've been staples in our city for quite some while. Um, and unfortunately, the, the models of these, they, they need to make money in order to survive. They have to have budget, they have to have funding. Um, so these are some of the constraints they have. We love you. We dearly, dearly love you. But, and the question I was asking, again, was, what about everyone else? And so curated content is great. It's really, really great. It's necessary. It's wonderful. People love it. But what about everyone else? There are all kinds of other people who want to give lectures and speak and whatever. We could have a whole week of these things and still not cover everyone who wants to participate. What about already existing programs of people in places like this that are here every week all throughout the year doing great things? And what about job training, community development, and investment? So who is everyone else? Let's look at that for a second. All right, so I got some information. <laughs> And uh, it's probably not exactly right here. Um, but I, I looked and approximately 52,000 people are working in the tech industry in Chicago. And I got this information from a combo of 
the Chicago Tribune and built in Chicago looking at a few stats of people who are working for some of the top tech companies in the city. And this may probably doesn't include teachers and other folks of that uh, nature, but um, that's the numbers I could come up with. And then the rest of the people, nearly 10 million people total in Chicago and surrounding area. So when we think about the technology industry, it's this big and the rest of everyone else is this big. So my thought is, why not do something that truly engages the larger portion? That's also who is everyone else. Another way to answer that is there are over 465 technology related meetup groups in and around Chicago and surrounding suburbs. And this is only what's listed on meetup.com. There are many, many, many others as well happening all over the city in various organizations. So the 465 number, that's only what's on Meetup. Now I had to look that up because I, you know, I'll get to this in a minute, but I do a lot of outreach to these groups. And, uh, and I, was, I was just amazed. Uh, 10 years ago, there were maybe like, I don't know, two, two networking events that everyone went to for tech. And now there are all these groups. It's, it's amazing. And there are over 120 tech venues, as shared office spaces, innovation spaces, um, engines, whatever you want to call it, event spaces, venues, all over the city. And this I found um, in Chicago Inno, uh, a special report they did recently. So over 120. So I can't even remember them all. When it, years ago, when I started out in tech, there may be like one, one. <laughs> now there are so many places people can go for events. Um, it's, it's absolutely mind-boggling. And to think that we would have a whole week dedicated and it's just in one location, you know, when there are so many places. So I was thinking about all of these things and I came up with this, you know, this thought, well, gosh, wouldn't it be neat if there was a, some kind of way to address this? And, and what inspired Tech Month Chicago and how it began was something called Chicago Artist Month that's been going on in Chicago for over 20 years, run by the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events in the city of Chicago. And, and I, I just love them, um, the hearts over here. Um, so you can see you know, the, the love there. Um, <laughs> but uh, but they, they're great people, and they have a wonderful organization. They do so many good, positive things. So they have a committee. They really care about uplifting marginalized groups and neighborhoods, communities, and they're very passionate about what they do, but it's mostly for the arts. But I thought, well, maybe they'll be interested in doing something with technology. So I went to meet them, and I you know, went over and scheduled a meeting and uh, put myself in there in front of them and said, hey, I have this idea. What about a technology month? And they said, hmm, that sounds really great. That's a wonderful idea, but we don't know anything about technology and, and we don't have the money to do this. Why don't you do it? So I said, oh, all right. <laughs> so I figured, why not? What do I have to lose? The worst thing that could happen is it could fail. So I put some things together and started um, with my own, uh, you know, self here, um, f flawed and vulnerable as I may be. I set forth to to do something, and um, and here's what we've created so far. Um, we're 2019. We're in our year four, and uh, and I'll go through here what we've done thus far um, with with uh, Tech Month Chicago. Um, in this last year, we had it in September, and we promoted in 2018 on a calendar of events, over 250 events. And the events were all throughout the city of Chicago and as many neighborhoods as we could. We did outreach, we, we spammed the whole meetup group, all those 465 meetups I said to you, we emailed them all and said, hey, we have this calendar, do you wanna list your event? And so many people did. Um, we reached out to the Chicago Public Library. They have over 100 STEM events all throughout their various branch locations. And um, we put all of them on our calendar. 
and, and worked tirelessly throughout the month to promote them all via social media. Um, and that was very tough. We promoted all 200 events equally. We, we uh, put out uh, notifications, tweets, all kinds of things. At least, probably, I don't know, approximately 10 tweets per event and plus a lot more, so we were very, very busy. Um, so we built that, and then in addition, we have 15 contributing venues, um, some of which are listed here, and then some people are here tonight. Um, so, we, so we did outreach to all these 120 venues and said, hey, would you guys like to donate your venue for Tech Month? and this, this Awareness Month, and they said, absolutely, we'd love to do it. It helps get the word out. We did a lot of promotion of, of these, and any, any one of those venues could participate. We were totally open and said, hey, if you want to join us and do something, and they said, yeah. So we brought together this, this group of all these venues here um, to, uh, to give people uh, with, at no charge uh, an ability to do an event. And there are many, many venues around, but not all of them are, are able to do it for free. Um, sometimes you have to pay lots of money to, um, to do an event or to rent out a space. But these venues for the Technology Awareness Month that we had designated were able to give people the space free of charge. So if someone wanted to do a lecture or, or a meetup group or a party or have their event, they could do it at any one of these venues. And they were all over the city, including the Chicago Southwest side and some of our newest manufacturing hubs, such as uh, Mind and Hand, which is a, a really amazing organization that's way out there in the, in the city, but in one of those neighborhoods that, that really needs a lot of attention. And they said, hey, we will have anyone, anytime throughout the whole month who wants to come to our neighborhood and help people learn about technology. So that was very um, rewarding that we were able to, to do that. Um, we created an inclusive campaign, and this uh, campaign included um, these uh, flyers here. Um, we designed them. I'm sure somebody else could probably have designed something better, but we, we did the best we could with what we had. And we made these into 11 by 17 posters. We worked with a company to plaster them all over the city. We put several thousand of these up all around uh, coffee shops, different cultural gathering spots, bulletin boards at colleges, you name it. We made stickers, postcards, that kind of stuff to try to engage the community. Um, and then we also made several wonderful images um, in, a, in an awareness and inclusive campaign to help engage people. Um, you know, technology a lot of times, visually, if you think in your mind, how does that look? Maybe you think of a green circuit board or something like that. Well, for inclusion, we thought that color is a powerful thing. Color has a lot of emotion to it, but we thought we could show technology in a more celebratory way and use a lot of different colors. And as a brand and as an identity for what we were trying to do, we wouldn't, didn't want to limit ourselves. So we experimented and tried to make as many celebratory, uh, exciting images to engage as many people as possible. Um, and I'll, I'll quickly flip through a few of uh, my favorites here, just so you can get a sense of what we did. And if you really think about it, these colors here, you probably don't see these on a circuit board. Maybe you should. That's right, a tie-dyed circuit board. Let's go. I'm ready. You see, we're trying to have fun here, you know, and engage the general public in a way that's, uh, that's uh, in, it, more exciting and, and more innovative as far as the, the appearance and marketing all of these things. As well, too, no one really does a whole lot as far as marketing and promoting all of our Chicago events. You may have a few calendars out there that, but no one's taken on an initiative quite like this. Pink. I'd like to see that in a circuit board. Okay. So we did the best we could to, to make something fun, cool, engaging, even geeky, 
to, to let people know, hey, we're here. And look at all these amazing events. There's 250 events and more all over the city of Chicago in the various different neighborhoods. So we broke free from the constraints of these other models I mentioned earlier. We had all the locations and all the events and everyone who wanted to participate becoming part of this, this project. And of course, when we did our Twitter, we tweeted out all these exciting images. And in this last year, for our Twitter campaign, for six weeks worth of tweeting, our, our arms were very tired. I think we had carpal tunnel. Um, but we had a million views on our Twitter campaign as a result. Um, I still felt, uh, st I was just, com it was completely staggering. I couldn't believe it. It was like, wow, people are really looking at this. Um, and so that, that was a good thing that we did, getting the word out to so many people across uh, Chicago and across the country, too, letting them know that, uh, that we have something here like this. Another thing that we did, and of course, a calendar is great and everything, and it's very valuable, but we wanted to do a bit more, too. And so for Tech Month, we barely scratched the surface of this, but I'd like to share with you what we have created so far. We've made some scalable programs and we worked with this wonderful company called the SPR Group. They are located in the Sears Tower, the Sears Tower, uh, down in downtown Chicago here, um, as a web design company. And they're a, an interesting company because they have uh, a person there who is vice president of uh, civic engagement, which you don't often see someone with a title like that in a for-profit company. And so they have a special business model where they believe that they have a commitment to um, the community at large. And so of course I wanted to work with them. And we work together to spearhead a program where some students from the south and west side came to the SPR group and, and they gave them a seminar on 3D printing. And, and it was an amazing thing and we were hoping to you know, with some more you know, time and effort and elbow grease here, engage more companies, engage more classrooms, engage more students like this to, to have, have people teach them, have people come for a field trip, uh, and scale it all throughout the city for Technology Awareness Month. Now this was just our, our pilot, and we hope to be able to share this with, with, um, with as many people as we can to get them to participate and do something. The next thing that I want to share with you that we spearheaded is uh, another thing. We worked with uh, Free Geeks Chicago. They're a non-for-profit organization in Chicago, and they uh, help people uh, learn to fix computers, and they have a program where you can get a free desktop or laptop if you commit to a certain number of volunteer hours. And so um, this is a photo here of myself um, and one of the um, directors at the Lakeview Food Pantry. And then um, Matt Washington, he is, uh, was working at the Free Geek Chicago as an employee at the time. We went to the Lakeview Food Pantry and talked to people who were down and out. They, they needed to be there to get food to eat. They were having all kinds of personal problems. And we said, hey, there's this thing called Free Geek Chicago. And if you are not feeling good about your life and things are going wrong, you could go there and learn how to fix computers and get a free computer. And they were like, oh, hey, well, we'll sign up for that. So we went out there and did some campaigning to help people. So we really worked on that as part of an initiative to, to something we hope that will scale. So we're hoping that something like this, where companies, people, individuals, organizations, will get out there to various organizations and groups of people who need help and help them with technology and the resources that they have available to them. Because we hope that people will believe technology is stronger than just a, a company that's out there to make a profit. But we can really help people. Another thing that we've created with Tech Month Chicago is a year-round awareness campaign. And it's taken the form of a radio broadcast called Tech Scene Chicago. And, uh, and I'm, I uh, decided to, I'm the host of it. Um, we work with a, a radio station called Lumpen Radio. They've been on the air for the last couple of years. Um, and, and when they first got started, they said, hey, um, we're looking for some people who wanna do programming. Sh show up and show us what you can do. I said, all right, I've got some ideas. And I went out and interviewed somebody and made a really crappy MP3 file and, and said, uh, this, is, this is a file. 
And they said, oh, okay, well, it'll sound much better on the radio, so get your stuff in order and, and come, come do this. And I, and I did. Uh, and I had no background, no experience uh, before. I'm not a trained journalist. I just really care. And um, so far with, on our radio broadcast, it's been over two years. We've had over 100 guests so far. We have over 60 hours of archived interviews of people who run tech events. Um, who, who tell their stories. And there are six people here tonight who've been on my radio broadcast. You guys want to raise your hands? Yep, yep. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. We're so glad you're here tonight. I really appreciate that. But what, I, and, I, and I did some research. Is a radio broadcast or podcast, if you think of like technology, business, stuff like that, usually the radio shows and podcasts that are out there, it's all about the following things. Uh, tell us about your startup. What kind of CEO are you? How much money did your startup raise? How much money did you sell your company for? You know, th those are kinds of the topics that, that you'll see out there. Well, this, this is about something different. This is about our community. This is about people who maybe don't have a reputation, who don't have a million dollars or anything like that. Gosh, sure would be nice if we did. But, but people who want to make a difference, people who are out there doing things because they want to. One of my favorite stories of a, a radio broadcast is a, a woman named Shana Atkins. And she could not be here tonight, but um, Shana wor worked at the time at Accenture, the time I interviewed her. And she decided of her own idea to go out to the south and west side and help women and families of color in the socioeconomic, um, you know, underprivileged areas of our fine and great city to help them feel as though they could start their own tech companies. This is amazing. And she has no funding, no one told her to do it, no one helped her, she went and did it all on her own. That is who I want on my radio broadcast. And I want to talk about what makes them tick, their stories, and, and what, makes them, what makes them do this, what drives them, and the people they help. Now that's a great news story. However, unfortunately, the news outlets don't often cover that. Instead, they cover the latest scandal and who screwed up. Such a pity. I, however, do care, and this is what I do. So those are some of the things we've done and we've tried a few things, and we've done a few things. We've had some bumps along the road here and there. Um, but we have some big plans for 2019, and I'll share with you what those are. So you see this sign here, uh, October 2019. We've done it in September the last couple of years, but we're going to switch to October. And the reason being is that you know, a, few, a few of the large tech conferences take place during the month of October. Um, such as the Chicago Innovation Awards, such as Ideas Week, other things like that. We want to partner with those organizations, try to help uplift them, and uh, get a little more um, good mojo going out in the community. We're going to have a, a large career fair and job training uh, event. We're going to work with the National ABLE Network on that. They're a non-for-profit here in the Chicagoland area, helping with um, all kinds of job training opportunities. And with the radio broadcast, who would have thought? Little old me with uh, this crappy MP3 file. Uh, fast forward to a couple of years later, and uh, this, this month we're going to do a special episode, and uh, there's a small, small office on Pennsylvania Avenue in the White House that uh, President Obama started and the new administration has decided to maintain called the, um, the Digital Services Office. Their office is in the White House. They called me this past week. Me, us. They want to be on my show. I still can't believe it. You know, um, I, I still just can't believe it. And, and so we're going to talk to them about what they're doing to help our country. And they're going to join the group of six people here and our other hundred guests uh, as, as people who are sharing their stories with the larger public of Chicago about what they're doing to try to make a difference. I still can't believe it. 
So a couple other things that we want to do um, this, this, uh, in this next year. We're changing from September to October. We're going to have uh, an exciting press rally, we hope, with a, a couple of really cool people who um, maybe don't get a chance to get out there and, and be the cheerleader for Chicago. But we're going to let uh, people like the people we've worked with on the radio broadcast who are doing these 465 events, serving all kinds of different areas, uh, give, give some talks and do like a big, a big uh, thing with it. Um, we want to hold a celebration party, and we want to get more citywide exposure, increase our partnerships with civ civic organizations, um, add more civic programs on our site. So you saw some of our pilot programs. I really feel like that's just scratching the surface of what we could do. There's so many things we could do, so many events we could do, so many ways we could grow this and expand this. We want to be like Shy Hack Night and become 501c3 designated. Um, there, there are heroes for that. So um, we want to apply for some grants, and we'd like to build a small army. <laughs> I'm just kidding, not really. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, um, so one of the things we're going to do, it is January, everybody. It's still not too late to make a New Year's resolution, and I hope you do. Um, but I've made a resolution to um, start a weekly breakout group here at Shy Hack Night. And it's going to be every week, and I'm going to invite everyone who's here and everyone who wants to come to come help me do this, to help me do all of it, you know, so that you can help me be a part of it, you can make something, you can put something on it. And, and everyone here, all of their wonderful projects and the groups that are already here, people who've presented, people who are all trying to do something, we can use this, this platform that I've made and helped make to, to uh, get the word out about it to a larger audience, to people, people throughout the city, and really work together. So I want to be able to share this and use it. And there are some cool pictures here. There's the flames and some break dancing and whatnot. I'm sure there'll be some opportunity for that as well. And I just want to say about the group that it's, it's really going to be awesome. So, and as they say, um, I think awesome is out. The word fire is in. Uh, it's going to be so fire. So, so do please come to the group and, uh, and help, me, help me be a part of it. So, now, um, so, so what questions do you all have for me? Um, before, before we started, um, tonight I went around and met a few people. Um, you know, Charles, you might have some questions. Uh, Dan, uh, Madeline, uh, some people I met when I first uh, walked in here. Uh, I, I would love to to uh, to take any questions, any feedback, thoughts, comments. If you have a question, I'll bring the microphone to you. Melanie, uh, uh, good to see you again. Um, my question is, have you seen this, uh, well, from a Tech Month standpoint, have you seen this as it compares to something like the Bay Area or New York or anything or other major markets for tech, maybe Austin, Texas or some of the other major markets. What have, what have been your thoughts on how Chicago is doing from a tech standpoint versus those other markets? That is a great question. Thank you so much, for Langston, for, for asking me that. Um, I did look into it and, and you know, Chicago, it, it, Chicago has a chip on its shoulder because we're not the coast and we're in the middle and, and we, we probably have some psychological issues as a city. But that's what makes us unique. <laughs> so um, if anything happened a couple weeks ago um, before the holidays, someone from Minneapolis, the, the city of Minneapolis, called, called me up. My phone rang. I'm like, who is this? And it was someone who works in the city of Minneapolis saying, hey, um, I saw your website, uh, Tech Month Chicago. Can, can you a answer a couple questions? We're thinking about doing a Tech Month. And I said, great, I'd be happy to help you with it. share anything that I possibly can. Um, so Minneapolis wants to do a Technology Awareness Month as well, and they see the value in, in, in what this is. So I'm, I'm hoping that Chicago will as well, and we can get some more support for it. Um, I, think, I think different cities have different needs. Um, and what I'll say is that when we talked about some of those other business models, such as the weeks, and there are lots of weeks out there. I think the weeks are great, but they, they also don't 
necessarily have enough bandwidth. You know, I think if someone tries to scale it and say, oh, well, we'll do a month. Oh, well, we'll do the month all over the country and we'll make a business and we'll make lots of money. That usually doesn't happen. And then they fall flat on their behinds and, and either go out of business or get someone else to run it. And that's usually not good for the, like the longevity of something. And if you build something and people need it and it's dependent upon making money and all these things, then it's, uh, it's vulnerable. And so I feel for what Tech Month can become, I don't have any national aspirations right now. I just think, hey, let's do good right here, right now for Chicago, um, because I think that's the, the best way to focus and the best use of time and resources. Um, but that's, that's my thought. Uh, but I, I wouldn't, I, I, think, uh, I think I would, uh, have a stroke if I tried to do Tech Month anywhere else besides here. It's a lot of work, but but very very fulfilling. Uh, is it just you doing this? That is another great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, um, and so as far as the Tech Month has, been, we've been going for the last three years. I've had a couple people helping me with donated time, such as web design, um, administrative help, marketing, concepting, things like that. Um, and, they, and they're not here right now because they're, they're busy doing other things. But I, I've had a group of volunteers helping out from people helping out with our website to a few other things. There have been um, some people I've had to pay as well. Um, and so just to be completely clear, Tech Month Chicago right now, right now, it's an LLC. And the reason why is because doing a non-for-profit is a lot of work. It's a lot of paperwork, it's a lot of filing, and I didn't even know from year to year if this was gonna be a thing. Like, oh, are we gonna do this again? I don't know, I don't know. So it was just easier, you know, um, but, I, but the business hasn't made any money. Don't worry, <laughs> don't worry. It hasn't made any money. I've declared a loss every single year. Uh, it's just easier from a paperwork standpoint to do it that way. So, and I paid a couple people to help with the website. I've held, had some people doing administrative tasks and then just taken a loss. Um, and so how I feel about that is that I'm, as far as my role, I'm the shepherd of this concept that I want to get across the finish line because I, I want to see a touchdown or whatever those sports things are. Um, I don't know, home run, I don't know. <laughs> I wanted to see one of those things happen, and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm getting it across the field, so to speak. Um, and then I see working toward getting it a nice home where it can exist outside of me and, and, uh, and wherever else. So, but it takes time to build that. It t and, and I see these first three years as a proof of concept. To say, hey everybody, this is what we can do. This is what this can become and then build it from there, you know, um, and just keep growing it. So that, I hope that answers your question. Okay. So you'd mentioned uh, in the beginning of your talk, uh, and you mentioned again the sort of weekly events and the tech expos. Um, have you had any contact with them since you started this? And have they expressed any interest in working with you? And if they did, what would your reaction to that be? Would you be into that? Yes, yes, um, that's an excellent question, Derek, and I'm very glad you asked. Uh, I am a huge fan of um, a woman named Amanda Signorelli. She is current CEO of, of Tech Week, and she has been on my radio broadcast in the past to discuss their, what they do, um, and she's just absolutely delightful. Um, in this last year, they only did Tech Week in Kansas City uh, in 2018, and I reached out to her and said, hey, what's going on? Um, she hasn't gotten back to me yet with what their plans are for the future, and I hope she will. Um, and I, and I, we would love to do anything with them. Um, another one, the social media week, um, I really don't know what happened there. They just stopped doing things in Chicago, and all of my uh, buddies who, d who did events for social media week called me and said, hey, you know, this isn't happening, what's going on? I would have loved to have done anything with them, but they just stopped coming here for whatever reason. Administrative changes, things turn over, I don't know. Um, and then uh, Ideas Week, that is another thing that's happening that's very popular that everyone knows about. Um, and they, they are a week of curated content where they bring people in to talk about not just technology, but all kinds of things. I've been in touch with their office, and, um, and we're gonna try to do some co-promoting 
and that's one of the reasons why I'm switching it to October, so we can help them and, and, uh, and work together. Um, yeah, because I, I think, too, sometimes in Chicago, like when I first started, someone called me up and said, oh, why do you need to exist? And they, and they were doing another event, and they said, how do I know you're not just going to poach my speakers or whatever? And, you know, they were worried about competition. Um, me, I don't worry about that. I, I just I just never have. I really like to work with, with other people. And um, But I, I told this person, I said, hey, I'm doing this thing, Tech Month, here it is, here's the concept, and you can poach as many of my speakers as you want for your next your thing next time. You take, take whatever I have and use it, right? And so, so that's how I feel about that, because I, I think sometimes, you know, in the world of ideas, people get an idea, oh, I'll do this thing, and then they want to protect it, you know, like, oh, this is my turf or something. You know, I, I just don't think there can be a central tech hub of anything. I don't think, it, I don't think things happen in just one location. I, I hope there are 100 more locations that open up. I, I hope there are 465 more uh, monthly tech events and 120 more venues, you know, if, if that's what it takes. Um, and, and, uh, and we'd love to work with all of them to, to say, hey, let's get some solidarity. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Give it up for Melanie.